Hello, this last video in the introduction to vectors section looks at a classic problem dealing with adding up vectors. What we have is a traffic light that is supported by two cables. There's tension in the cables so that the traffic light is hanging in equilibrium. It's not swaying back and forth. So we have the picture of the traffic light. Now the, the, the angle of inclination the angle that the that the cord uh, the the cable makes with the horizontal is different from the right and the left, and so it makes a twenty degree angle with the right and a fifteen degree angle with the left. the The traffic light has a weight to it of two hundred pounds, and so that's a force that's acting um, on the on uh, on the traffic light as well. And so there's the tension in the cables, and then the the weight of the traffic light drawn out in vectors here attached um, at the point of attachment we call that point O and we have then the vector F1 who goes with the 20 degree we have the vector F2 who goes with the 15 degree and we have the vector W which is to denote the weight of the traffic light okay the, our job is to figure out the actual magnitude of the forces in the cables F1 and F2 find mag F1 and find mag F2 you see because when it hangs in equilibrium the sum of the vectors is going to be zero the resultant vector it's called you see because F1 plus F2 remember how we add them um, it'll be the opposite of W and so F1 plus F2 is actually then going to be, when you add W to it, you'll get zero. That's what the picture at the bottom is supposed to, to denote. All right. So what do we do? Well, we then need to set up our equations. Take a, a good look at um, uh, the drawing B there. And we're going to... Um, Okay, sorry, it's on there. So, um, with the represent the the magnitude of F one. I'm using double bars. I know I said single bars, but um, the magnitude of F two, and then there's the W. There's a twenty degree angle with F one, and there's the fifteen degree angle with F two. Now we have the origin at zero there, the point O, and so F one is going to the right, a positive X and a positive Y. But F2 is going to the left. That's a negative X and a positive Y. We have to take these negatives into account. Um, use trigonometry. That makes a right triangle. And so the um, cosine of 20 degrees will be equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Let me write that down. The cosine of 20 degrees... Will be equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse and that's going to be um, the hypotenuse is mag of f1 and you're basically looking for the adjacent side so that's how we end up with the adjacent side being mag f1 cosine theta and then the upright side the the j component of that vector is mag f1 sine of theta a sine of 20 degrees Okay. Okay, so we have exactly the I and J components of F1. Now we need the I and J components of F2. We have to remember though, the origin is at the point O. So the I component of F2 actually is negative. It points in the negative I direction. The positive I to the right, but the negative I is to the left. So we have to enforce that. And so how do we enforce that? Well, we have to put a negative on that term. It's not negative. You do, you do the whole trig that we just did before, and there's no negative there. We have to force it to be negative. That's the key to the question. 
What about the J component? Same, using sine. No need to force that to be negative. That's a positive. And so F2 sine of 15. So we have the I and J components of F1 and F2. Let's write them out. F1 as a vector is equal to the I component, which is mag F1 cosine of 20. The J component, which is mag F1 sine of 20. Then we have F2 as a vector, but its I component is negative at mag F2 cosine 15. This J component is mag F2 sine 15. All right. If you add F1 and F2, you'll get the opposite of W. And so add W to both sides. And it's the sum of all three vectors equal to the zero. That bolded zero is the zero vector. Well, we have F1 in its I and J components, or it's, it's, it's um, V brace notation. We have F2. We just need to throw in W and add these guys together. What's the W vector? What is the I component of the W vector? It, it, it has no I component. It's just pointing downward in the J component. And so zero for the I, negative, and then let's just use the, the, the weight, 200 for the uh, J. So we're all set. A little bit of algebra, vector, uh, pretty much everything else is over. It becomes a sum, um, two equations, two unknowns kind of thing. Add the I components, set it equal to zero. Add the J components, set it equal to zero, because that's what all three of these will add up to, the zero, zero vector. So mag F1 cosine 20 minus mag F2 cosine 15 plus zero is equal to zero. Mag F1 sine 20 plus mag F2 sine 15 minus 200 is equal to zero. Two equations, two unknowns. I probably should have used a different color there so you can see. But the double bar mag F1, double bar mag F2, those are your variables. That's what you're looking for. This isn't some simple, you know, uh, elimination method where you can just like, you know, add them, uh, multiply one equation by something and add them together. So we're going to have to uh, do substitution method. All right, take the first one and solve for either mag F1 or mag F2. It's probably easier to solve for mag F1 by adding the mag F2 cosine 15 over and then dividing by the cosine 20. Now that you have your mag F1 in hand, you go to the second equation and plug that in. That way the second equation only has mag F2 as it's unknown. It's a bit messy, I agree. And you don't know the cosine of 20 or the sine of 15. These aren't nice unit circle angles. You don't have a calculator. That's okay though. I'm just looking for an expression. Let's say for mag F2. I know they want both and we'll have to go to a calculator to get what they're looking for, but you can do this. Uh, one thing that you can do to make your life a little easier is to recognize that you have sine of 20 divided by cosine of 20. So why don't you call it tangent? All right. Mag F2 is in both of these terms on the left. We're going to factor it out. You'll be left with the cosine 15 and the tangent of 20. In the second term, you'll be left with the sine of 15 and the 200 has been moved over to the other side. One step away from being done. Just divide by the square bracket. And you have your expression for the magnitude of F2. You can plug into a computer and, and get a decimal version for it, just to get a feel for it, about 327.66 pounds. That's the mag of F2. Um, with the shorter angle, I think we should expect the magnitude of F1 to be more? That's my intuition. Uh, and so how do you get the magnitude of F1? Use your substitution. You know mag F2. So go ahead and plug in to the what you subbed in, plug into the blue basically, uh, mag F2, and you'll be able to cosine 15, divide by cosine 20, 
and be able to get mag f1 and it is slightly larger 336 great job hardcore application questions there's others to come for sure this is the end of the intro to vectors lecture coming up next will be two more lectures one all about the dot product and one all about the cross product my name is Nikai Rimmer. Thank you for watching this video. Please um, comment down below if you have any questions. Reach out to me. Like and subscribe. And uh, take it through this journey through multivariable calculus. All right. See you in the next video. Take care.